Lord been burdened on my heart greatly over the last month, I'd say. Dealing with not having a burden for those around us. As we said back in the prayer room, and I, I, I'm not saying this in a mean way or, or, or anything, it's just a fact. Churches are not in into evangelism like they used to be. Amen? Uh, they're more into survival mode now. At one time, people was hungry for the Word of God. At one time, people was desiring for the Word of God to be preached, desiring to be set under the Word of God to be changed, to draw closer, to be like Jesus Christ. Amen. My friends, we're living in the great falling away where children of God decide that they don't care about the things of God no more, that it's all became about them instead of about the Lord. But today, there's a, I want to preach a message that God brought me back to again. And I believe any, every message that God gives us is for a reason, for a purpose. And I sure am glad that His Word never dies. I'm glad it never grows stale. I'm glad that it's forever living. Amen? Yeah. So we're going to look tonight about some things that we need to be looking in our lives about others. Amen? And if you will, in your Bibles, you can start, we'll start off here in chapter 18 of Genesis. We're going to be looking at several verses or passages of Scripture. You can just jot them down or write them down as you need to. But before we even get started, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer because we sure are going to need some help tonight. Amen. I'm going to need help in preaching. Y'all going to need help in listening. We all going to need help in moving. Amen. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we love you. Lord, we give you our life afresh this moment. Give it to you. You use it for your glory and your honor. Lord, we need help tonight. To realize our failures, our faults, give them to you, not ponder on them, not wonder on them, not dwell upon them, but give them to you and they'll be gone and we go further, further the next day as a brand new life in the service of you. Help us, Lord, each and every one of us. Lord, I open our minds tonight to these scriptures. Not only open our minds, but give us the power, the strength to put ourselves aside just for a, a short time, because I believe that's all we got left here on this earth, and focus upon the work that you left us here to do. We love you, Lord. We thank you for all you do for us. We ask us all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Some might remember parts and most of this message. If you like writing titles down, it might be already in your Bible. It's called Standing in the Gap. Amen. And what we need is good people, good children of God, committed to God and loves the God to start standing in the gap for those who are unable to stand for themselves. Amen. I believe beyond a shadow of a doubt as a saint of God grows old and, and I believe uh, as their bodies start breaking down and through the prayer life of through their whole life as they prayed and prayed and prayed and the bodies start breaking down or something happens to the mind and it breaks the what down and we're unable to pray. I believe there's an accessory prayer going in before God's behalf and our prayers going before God every single day. I believe our prayers never stop. I never, they never falter. They never fail. They're still going before God. If, even if our minds break apart and we can't even, we don't even know who we are at this time. And I've seen people's minds melt down to nothing. I've seen strokes. I've seen sickness. I've seen things happen to people where their minds just completely melt away. They don't know who they are. They don't know who you are. They don't know who Jesus is now. But my friends, the prayers that they cried out when they was on this earth is still going before an almighty God. That's how important it is, my friend, for us to grab a hold of a good prayer life, maintain a good prayer life, never give it to the world, never let Satan rob us of it, but continue in faithful prayer unto the Lord for the lost souls, those who are sick and afflicted, those who are went astray into the world, my friend, we don't give them over to the devil. We need to give them over to the Lord Jesus Christ. I can't change nobody. You can't change nobody. But I know the change maker. Amen. His name is the Lord Jesus Christ. And my Bible says I can come boldly into the presence of Almighty God with my prayers. 
But I need, we need to get busy uh, interceding for those who can't pray for themselves. Uh, we're going to look at some folks here tonight uh, in this precious, uh, beautiful book, uh, the Word of God tonight, of uh, some people who stood in the gap, who interceded for some people who was unable to intercede for themselves. And we see where God honored their prayer. Uh, I see where God honored their request and answered their prayer. First one we're going to look at here tonight uh, is in the book of uh, Genesis chapter 18. Uh, and we know uh, exactly what's going on right here. Uh, we know... Uh what happened right here? And I'll just give you a little background about this. Uh, well, you know a man named Abraham. Everybody's heard about Abraham. You can shout amen or shake your head or smile uh, in church, amen. It's legal, amen. Uh, we all heard about a man named Abraham. God said you're going to be the father of many nations, Abraham. Uh, he, he's a man that stepped out on faith. The father of faith is what the word of God calls him. A man named Abraham left his family, left all he knew behind and walked out into a country where he didn't know where he was going. He's just going to be led of God. His old buddy nephew Lot come along with him. You know the story. God blessed him, did he not? Because of Abraham's faithfulness to God, because of Abraham's devotion to God, because his dedication to God, God blessed Abraham. And God's blessing Abraham overflowed into Lot. Amen. Ain't you glad when you can hold on to somebody that God's a blessing and you get the showers of blessing when it's falling out on them too? Amen. You get somebody in the church that God's just pouring the blessings out. I like getting up next to them because I get some blessing too. Amen. Uh, you just see them smiling with the blessings of God all over them. Abraham was getting blessed. Uh, boy, what a time he was having. Uh, everything he had was prospering. His crops, his animals, his family was, uh, you know, everything around him was just going so good. His wife was still barren, no. But God's going to take care of that later on. And we see where Lot's being blessed, just being with Abraham. The cattle's got so big, they wasn't able to sustain. The area that they was at was unable to sustain these huge herds. And, and you start seeing the, uh, the, the, their, their servants starting to squabble back and forth about whose land is whose and who's got grazing rights here and whose animals should be here and whose animals should be there. Abraham being a man of God. Should be a good lesson for each and every one of us here. Amen. Yeah. Abraham's a father of the nation. Amen. Abraham's the one being blessed. Amen. Abraham's the one that God sent out. Not a lot. But Abraham, seeing this conflict between one another, knew that it was going to bring problems between him and his nephew Lot. So he calls his nephew in and says, Lot, it's what we're going to do. God's blessed us. God's blessed me and he's blessed you. Our herds can't sustain this area. So we're going to have to divide and part ways. He said, I'll tell you what you do. You pick the way you want to go. You want to go left? I'll go right. You want to go right? I'll go left. You just pick it, Lot. And I'll go the opposite way. You know, that's, that's pretty humble. <laughs> to me, that's, that's pretty humble. What he should have done, what I'd have done is, Lot, get your junk, get out of my way. Amen. This is my spot. Get out. Amen. But that's not what Abraham did. Abraham humbled himself before God. Humbled himself before Lot. Gave a lot to choice. Well, you know what Lot's decision was. He had his eyes fixed on the well-watered plains of Jordan, thinking about how much money he can make, how the good schools that his children could go to, the fine shops that his wife could shop in down there, how they can prosper as a family. Down. All these things are not bad things. Don't get me wrong. But if it ain't where God wants you to be, you don't need to be there. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. That might be a good thing for those looking at jobs too. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You don't take a job going to take you away from God. Never. God never give you a job like that. That's another preaching message. We won't get on that. So we know that he divided there and Abraham went this way. Lot went down to Sodom and Gomorrah. We know the story that Lot uh, took his family into that cesspool of sin down there and corrupted himself. Amen. The Bible says corrupted himself. God wasn't pleased with this. So God's going to go down there and he's going to destroy the people in Sodom and Gomorrah. So Abraham being the father of the nation, God just ain't going to whoosh right in and destroy this city without letting Lot know what's going on. So he goes by Lot and this is the, the words that was being said. I, I'm going to get up here to where we're going to be here, but he 
he's saying to Abraham right here, he says, he said, the Lord said, because of the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah, this is verse 20, is great. And because their sin is very grievous. Now, a sin that is grievous is bad. But God called it out as a very grievous sin and I'm going to destroy this whole city. Not only the city of Sodom, but the other city of Gomorrah and all the cities around that this sin's a touch to. I'm going to destroy it. Abraham gets to thinking, now wait a minute, wait a minute. My nephew Lot and his family is down in this cesspool of sin that God's going to destroy. You know, right now would have been the perfect time for us to show our true colors. He, he probably could have said, well, that'll learn him. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> he made his bed. Let him lie in it. Amen. How many of you ever heard that saying before? Maybe you even use it yourself. Uh, hey, they made their bed. Let them lie in it. Uh, or that'll learn. That's my saying anymore. Uh, if you've been around me very much, uh, uh, that'll learn you. You know, Don't play with that saw. You cut your fingers off. What? That'll learn you. Don't play with the saw no more. Don't stick your fork in the light socket. Bam, across the room. That'll learn you. Hey Amen. That's my saying. Now that'll learn you. Abraham right there could have said, that'll learn him. But you know what he did? Again, Abraham humbles himself down before God. Humbles himself down below Lot. And he starts interceding for Lot. Lot is in the land of a place of grievous sin. Lot is not concerned about his family. His spiritual condition. Worldly positions, he's worried about it. Spiritual condition, ain't too worried about it. So somebody has got to intercede for Lot and his family. Abraham took it upon himself to intercede for him. You can see this intercession right here. Hey, God done told him, I'm going uh, to go down to uh, Sodom and Gomorrah because their sin is very grievous. Verse 23 of chapter 18. And Abraham drew near and said, Wilt thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Peradventure that there be 50 righteous within that city. Wilt thou also destroy, destroy and not spare the place for 50 righteous that are therein? That be far from thee to do after this manner, <coughs> to slay the righteous with the wicked, and that the righteous should be as the wicked. That be far from thee, shalt not the judge of all the earth do right? He's interceding. Lord, 50 people down in that city down there that are saved, that believe in you, love you, trust you, serve you, would you not spare that city? God gives his answer right here. And the Lord said, hmm. Now, the Lord didn't say that, but I kind of added that in there. I thought it kind of sounded good, didn't you? <laughs> if I find in Sodom 50 righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sakes. Man, that's a big deal. Amen. Abraham gets to thinking. Man, God said this city was not just full of sin, but it's grievous sin. Mm, Lord, Abraham answered, said, Behold now, I have taken upon me to speak unto the Lord, which I am but dust and ashes. Peradventure there shall be like five of the fifty righteous, would thou also uh, would thou destroy the city for the lack of five? He said, If thou find there forty and five, I will not destroy it. Man, that's a pretty good deal. Amen. But then Abraham gets to thinking again. Wait a minute, it's not only sin covered that whole city, it's grievous sin. But not only is it grievous sin, the Lord said it was very grievous sin. Maybe I better go back to the Lord again. Maybe I need to intercede a little bit further. I'm not going to be satisfied with 50. I'm not going to be satisfied for 45. And he said to him, oh, let the Lord not be angry. Verse 30. I will speak. Peradventure there be 30 found there. And he said, I will not do it if I find 30 there. He said, Behold now, I take it upon me to speak unto the Lord. Peradventure there shall be 20 found there. And he said, I will not for 20's sake. And he said, Oh, let the Lord not be angry. And I will speak yet this once. Peradventure 10 be found there. 
And he said, I will not destroy it for ten's sake. Abraham was satisfied with ten. He stopped interceding at that ten mark. He figured Lot, his wife, his daughters, and their sons, surely ten's going to cover that right there. If Lot was any kind of man, if Lot was any kind of man at all who loved the Lord at least a little bit, could take his eyes off the worldly treasures and focus upon the spiritual need of his family, surely to goodness he did that. Surely to goodness he would have. Verse 33 said, The Lord went his way as soon as he left communion with Abraham, and Abraham returned unto his place. And we know what happened down there. We know that Lot was the only one that came out of that city with his daughters. That was it. I believe it pleased God when he looked down out of the portals of heaven and seen a man of the father of the nations humble himself down before God and started interceding for Lot who was unable and would not intercede for himself. Maybe Lot knew where he was wrong. The Bible says that his heart grieved daily. Amen. Lot knew that he was in a cesspool of sin. But the money he was making was too much more, was greater than on his flesh than what he could handle in the spirit. Boy, that's a message in itself. Because I see today's people letting the treasures of the world override what the spiritual need is inside and their family suffering, their children suffering, their grandchildren suffering because of our need of the flesh is too great. You know why? We're fighting that battle in the flesh instead of in the spirit. I believe it pleased God. I believe it pleased God that Abraham intercede for a lot at that time. I see another instance over in Exodus chapter 32 where there was an intercession taking place here. Exodus chapter 32. And the Bible, we, and I give a little bit of background on this right here. And we know what's going on right here in Exodus 32. Here we know that Moses had done brought the children of Israel out of bondage with the power of God upon his hand. Now the, the Red Sea has done past them. Amen. That's behind them when it parted. The, 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 the Red Sea closing in upon the Egyptian army and they're wiped away. They will never see the Egyptians again. Amen. That's all behind them. The crying out for water and the rock was there and gave them water. Crying out for food and the manna fell from heaven. All that's behind them now. They're at the bottom of the great mountain of God now. And there again, Moses went up into the mountain to get the laws that God has going to pass down to the people. And during that 40 days that Moses was up on the mountain, the people corrupted themselves. God didn't corrupt them. Amen. They corrupted themselves. I'm going to tell you today, there's a lot of people in our churches, you can't blame it on the preacher. They're wanting to. You can't blame it on the deacons. They're trying to. You can't blame it on the congregation. Boy, they're itching to. But the only one you can blame is yourself because you corrupted yourself by letting the world in instead of Jesus in. Amen. Preach it, preach it, preach it. Preach it, preach it. And we know what's going on here. As Moses is up on the mountain, and God tells Moses, He said, Get yourself down. Let's get back here to the scriptures that we need to. Here is a discussion between Moses and the Lord. In chapter 32 and verse 9, and the Lord spake unto Moses, I have seen these people. And behold, it is a stiff neck people. Now therefore let me alone that my wrath may wax hot against them that I may consume them and I will make thee a great nation. Boy right here it would have been a great time. Can I say this? For old Moses to say yep 
You're right. These bunch of heathens, I've done drug through the wilderness. All they did was whine and complain, whine and complain. They tried to kill me. They was going to stone me. Hey, they just whine and complain. Nothing couldn't satisfy these people. You're right, God. Kill them all. They ain't worth saving. Moses didn't do that. <coughs> Been a good opportunity for Moses to go into the flesh mode, amen. And I'm just going to be honest about it. What would you have done if you was in Moses' shoes? Would you say, yeah, Lord, kill him. But you no good. The Lord done said they was stiff-necked. You ever get a stiff neck in the morning? Anybody get a stiff neck? Man, I tell you, you can't turn your head at all. Eh? And then he's saying their neck is stiff toward the world and toward the worldly and ungodly things, toward the idols, toward idol worship. And they're not going to turn their head. Let me wax. I'm just going to let my wrath wax hot against them. And I will literally wipe them off the face of the earth. And I'll make, and he points his finger, that old Holy Ghost finger at Moses. And I'll make you a great nation. Boy, that had been a good time for Moses to kick in the old flesh. What did Moses do in verse 11? The Bible says, And Moses besought the Lord his God, and said, Why doth thy wrath wax hot against thy people? When thou hast brought them forth out of the land of Egypt with a great power and with a mighty hand. Wherefore should the Egyptians speak? And say, for mischief did he bring him out and slay him in the mountains and consume him from the face of the earth. Turn from thy fierce wrath and repeat of this evil against thy people. Hmm. Of course, Moses ain't no different to me and you. We get in trouble. We get, get it serious about our prayer life. And we'll start quoting Scripture back to God like He don't know what the Bible says. Amen. Yeah. We'll, we'll get so sick and we'll get to hurting. Our heart will be ripped from out of our body. And, and we'll read Scriptures like, Lord, you know you said you won't put more on me than I can bear. Huh? How many has ever did that? Quoting Scriptures back to God like He don't know what the Bible says when He is the Word of God. Yeah. Yeah. Abraham was no different. <laughs> Abraham said, remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, thy servants, to whom thou swearest by thy own self, and said to them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven, and all this land I have spoken I will give thee unto your seed, and they shall be inherit it forever. Verse 14 is pretty important right here. And the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do unto his people. Man, that's powerful. Amen. I believe it pleased God that Moses humbled himself down and stood between the children of Israel and God. Moses stepped in between them. It says, you can't hurt them. You can't destroy them. I'm in the way here, Moses. Lord, I'm Moses, the one that you love. Amen. I'm the one. And you, you what's the Egyptians going to say? That you just brought them out? Did all those miracles down there in the land of Egypt? Parted the Red Sea? Did all those magnificent wonders that you did just to bring them out here and kill them and consume them? No, Lord, you're too big of a God to do that. You're too big of a God. You know what it is? God knew he wasn't going to do that. Why did he put this opportunity before Moses' face? Why? To give Moses an opportunity to intercede for God's people. Amen. Moses showed his love for the children of Israel. Did he not? Yeah. Moses showed his concern for the children of Israel. Did he not? We're going somewhere here in a minute, folks. But that's not what just what all Moses did right there. Do you understand? Moses not only stood in the gap, but we're going to read some scriptures right here. Well, Moses went all the way. He went to extremes about standing in the gap. So we'll do these little prayers for the lost. Lord, save these people. Save my brother. Save my mother. Save my sister. Save, save this. And it's just like a nonchalant, easy come, easy go prayer. If you answer it, that's fine. If you don't answer it, that's fine. I'm going to please my conscience and I'm going to pray. <laughs> I'm going to do my thing and I'm just going to pray. No matter, you know, if it answers or not, I don't really care. I'm just doing what's going to be good for me. 
Does it kind of sound about like a lot of our prayers that we do? Amen, preacher. Amen, preacher. Just being honest. You be honest with God. I know what them prayers are like because I pray a lot of them. Moses stood in the gap with extremes. Exodus 32, verse 30. What happens here? Now it came to pass on morrow, on the morrow. Moses said unto the people, you have sinned a great sin. And now I will go up to the Lord and peradventure. I shall make an atonement for your sin. You know when you make an atonement for something? Can I say this? Jesus made an atonement for us. Yeah. Amen. That means Jesus gave everything he had to keep us out of hell. Amen. Atonement. Moses is using the exact same word that Jesus used in our behalf. Moses is taking this to another level now. Sissy praying is out the door. Amen. Uh, just, just going through the request, uh, just going through the motions that make me feel good about it. It's gone now. Moses is talking atonement now. Amen. He says, verse 31, And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, Oh, these people have sinned a great sin. And have made them gods of gold. Yet now, if thou wilt, forgive their sin. And if not, blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book, which is written. Now, do you understand what he's saying? Lord, take me out of the book. Take me out of the book that is written. Uh, if you won't forgive these sin, I'm just going to go ahead and make an atonement for them. I'll, I'll, st I'll stand right here for them. You kill me, Lord. Send me to hell instead of killing these people. The Lord heard what he was saying. And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever has sinned against me, him I will blot out of my book. Therefore now go and lead the people into the place which I have spoken to thee. Behold, my angels will go before thee. Nevertheless, in the day when I visit, I will visit upon the sin, their sin upon them. And the Lord plagued the people because they had made a calf which Aaron had made. You know what we need to do, my friend? We need to take serious about interceding for those who are dying and going to hell around us. Amen? Yeah. Now we know we got all kinds of sick around us. All kinds of people who are, are deathly sick. But if they're saved, hallelujah. If the Lord takes them, our hearts are going to break. But hell, heaven's going to be full with their presence. I think we need to intercede, first of all, number one, for those who are dying and going to hell. We need to realize what their end is. We need to understand there's no second chances. There's no tomorrow. We need to intercede for him now. And if God was pleased with Abraham for humbling himself and interceding for the people, if God was pleased with Moses for interceding for the people, and he blessed them, and he, and he did what he said he was going to do, don't you think God will bless us and be pleased with us? If we would humble ourselves down the same way and intercede for those who are unable to intercede for themselves. Moses standing there before God. And at the time Moses is standing before God, the cry was coming out of the camp. Remember, Moses come down out of the mountain with the tablets. He met Joshua coming down the mountain and had the word of God in his very hands. And you can hear the cries from out of the camp down there. And Joshua says, it sounds like the cry of war. Moses said, nope. It sounds like the cries of those who corrupted themselves. And that's when Moses got all red-faced, you remember? Threw the tablets down and broke them, amen. And it wasn't a short time after that, he begged God to let him see his glory, amen. Boy, I'm telling you, Moses needed to pick me up then. Let me tell you about somebody else. <coughs> They stood in the gap for extremes, with extremes. Let me read this verse of Scripture to you. For God so loved the world. Yeah. 
that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have yeah. everlasting life. <laughs> That's pretty extreme. Amen. He stood in the gap for a whole people in the world who was unable to stand for themselves. Amen. You know what happened? Just as, as, as Abraham stood in between God and Lot and says, wait a minute. Just the same way as Moses stood in between God and the children of Israel and said, wait a minute. Jesus Christ stood in between God and me and said, wait a minute. I hear what you're saying for the wages of sin is death. But I come to give him life. Amen. It's going to be through my blood. It's going to be through my, my atonement that I'm going to make for him. That's standing in the gap with extreme, don't you think? How many times have I gave my testimony about my mom and dad? I gave it not long ago, and I'm not going to go through the whole thing. But it got to the point where I was tired of the sissy praying. That's what I call it, sissy praying. It's prayer with no meaning. Sissy praying is when you pray and it don't cost you nothing. Amen. It ain't going to cost you no time. It ain't going to cost you no money. It ain't going to cost you nothing. And we'll do that kind of sissy praying. But when it gets really involved, when it starts costing your time and maybe your money or your effort, your time, your talent, boy, there's a lot of people start shying away from that type of prayer. Because then it's going to cost some. When I got out of the sissy prayer mode and started praying to God, take my life from my mom and dad to be saved. I want to be the very thing, the vessel that you're going to use for them to save. If my life is going to end today for them to get saved, Lord, take it. I got serious. How about my mom and dad? You know what? I, I believe it pleased God. I humbled myself down. And I stood in between the judgment of God and my mom and dad. And I said, hold it. If you're going to get them, you're going to have to go through me to get to them. I'm willing to lay my life down for an atonement for them if they'll get saved for them. You ever prayed a prayer like that? You ever got serious about a prayer life like that? It was going to cost me my life. I meant it with every meaning, my being, my whole soul. I meant that prayer with everything I had in me. And a matter of fact, I knew that was the last day I was going to be on the earth. I knew it. I didn't have enough faith that God could save my mom. I didn't have enough faith that he could save somebody like my dad. My dad never whispered a word about God in his whole life. My mother swore that she was a good person, didn't need God. Like beating my head against that wall since I was saved. Mom, you need to get saved. You need to get saved. You need to get saved. I don't have to. I don't have to. I'm good enough. I'm a good person. God knows me. I'm a good person. You mentioned to my dad, he would just look at you. So I knew that was my last day. But I knew, I knew, I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt. If I'd have dropped dead right then, I'd have been in the presence of Almighty God. And I knew if God was going to take me right then, that I was going to see Him shortly thereafter. <laughs> Amen. Needless to say, God blessed me and honored my prayer life. And I heard my mom and dad hit the floor in my living room, exact same place that I knelt down. And I heard him say, I believe you died for me. I believe that you rose up from the dead. And my dad saying this out of his own mouth. Lord, I'm a sinner. Save me right now. Sweetest words I ever had heard. They're in heaven waiting on me now. It ain't going to be long, I believe, till we're all gathered around the throne. He's going to see some grandchildren that they ain't got to meet yet. He's going to know exactly who they are. Yeah. Don't even have to introduce them. I ain't going to have to go up there and say, Mama, guess who this is? And she's going to grab me up and say, That's my little baby. Jesus is still standing in the gap for us today. Did you know that? He, he didn't see the necessity to just pray one time and not pray no more or, or, or do a job and not do it no more. The Bible says right here in 1 John chapter 1. I love these scriptures. And this right here is kind of a cutting line for us who proclaim to be saved. 
The Bible says in verse 6, if we say that we have fellowship with Him, the Bible says if you say that you're saved, let me put it that way, and walk in darkness, amen, and walk in, dark, walk in sin, we lie and do not know the truth. That means you can go around and boast all day that you're a child of God. Amen. You can say that you're, you're a child of God, but if you're not walking according to God's will and His love and His mercy and grace, you're a liar. As Angie would say from Rodale, you're a liar and the truth is not in you. Verse 7 says, but if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. Amen. Boy, that's hard to swallow, ain't it? Bible says that if you're saved, you'll have fellowship with one. Not just the clique. Amen. Not just certain ones. Amen. With one another, everybody. Amen. If you're in Christ. If you're in the light. If you are saved. Amen. No circumstances, no situations, no, no PS, uh, PS on the end of that. No, no God understands on the end of that. You either love everybody or you're lost. Wow. Wow. Fellowship with one another in the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses from all sin. If we say we have no sin. Uh-oh. It's a, it's a hair lip somebody. We deceive ourselves. The truth is not in us. Bible says in verse 9, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Hallelujah. You know what that is? That's still standing in the gap. Amen. That's still standing in the gap. If we say we're not sin, we make Him a liar. And His Word is not in us. I got to go down to chapter 2, verse 1. It's good too. My little children. Now, who's He talking to here? When God says His children, who's He talking to? Tell me, church. Talking to the church. Those who are saved, right? These things I write on you, that you sin not. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ the righteous. He is a propitiation for our sins, not only our sins only, but the sins of the whole world. So why do we live in sin? Why do we have sin running rapid in our lives and growing daily in our lives? Because we are enjoying it, we like it, and we think we fool God about it. Amen? Some things we need to stand in the gap for. Got a list here. You ready? Lost in your families. There ain't a person in this building that don't have lost, dying, and going to hell around us. Amen. So what does that tell me, preacher? That means you need to break away from ourselves, stand in between judgment of God and hell and these people, and say, hold it, God. Let me pray for them. Let me intercede for them right now. I want to go, if, go in, in the presence of Almighty God in their behalf. Lord, just give them more grace and more mercy extended to them. Long enough for them to get saved. You know, each day we live is the grace of God. Each day we have, each breath we take is the mercy of God. And God could cut the mercy off like that. The grace off just like that. Don't you think we need to intercede for that mercy and grace to be extended? For them to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Maybe you might need to be the one to carry that gospel in. I tell you what, something you need to stand in that for? Look beside of you. Look left, look right. Look behind you, look in front of you. This is what they call the church family. Amen. It's not just a bunch of people you go to church with to analyze what they're wearing or the lack thereof. Amen. Amen. It's not our business. 
We need to be concerned about their loss in their family. And you concerned about the loss in my family. We need to be concerned about those who are sick and afflicted and our bodies are breaking down. And you need to be a, uh, uh, concerned about my body breaking down. Amen? We need to be concerned about one another. This is not an individual thing. It's a group thing. If you're not in the group thing, what are you doing here? You don't want to go to heaven. They ain't got individual rooms in heaven. Need to intercede before an almighty God. Because I'm going to tell you right now, Satan is sitting on the front pew, the next pew, the next pew, the next pew, every pew in this room right here. Satan's sitting right here beside the preacher in the pulpit. He's present. He never misses a service. He's the most faithful person on the, on the earth. It's Satan to our churches. He knows this word of God inside and out. He knows what every page says. He knows who Jesus is and his power. He knows all of these things. Satan is here right now. He likes to mess with our minds. He likes to get us distracted. He likes, just, just for a second, if he could distract you from the word of God just for that much right there, he'd done his job for today. I could walk into church, I could sit down here, the kids going to be hollering and screaming, and I'm focused in on the Word of God. I don't hear none of it. Becky says, the kids were many. I said, I didn't hear a word. I didn't hear them one time. Because I ain't concerned about a baby crying. I'm concerned about the Word of God, and I can lock in and zero in, and I don't hear nothing else. Amen. If you're locked in, and you want to hear something from God. If not, you'll listen to what Satan says. So look, listen. Start looking at people, noticing what they're doing. Need to intercede for our church. A church that don't pray for one another, it's just a tax-exempt social club. Just going to say it. Amen? Boy, I'm telling you, we better be doing some intercession for our country. Amen? Have you ever seen the mess that people's in? You used to think... Outside the Bible Belt was ungodly. But inside the Bible, there ain't no Bible Belt no more. It's gone. More ungodly things going on around us and people are living like dogs. Well, I'm going to say this. A dog lives more moral than what most people are living today. They'll jump with this parper and run with this the next night and run over here the next night, live with this for a week or two, live with this for a week bouncing children from one place to another. The kids don't know nothing. They're so confused. And I'll say this. When you're bringing a child up with two moms in a home, that's pretty confusing. Amen. Two dads in a home, that's pretty confusing. God never, ever meant it to be that way. One man, one woman for life. Amen. That's it. That's God's plan. We need to pray for our country. I would be afraid. God gave us a reprieve is what he did in this last election. I don't care if you like who our president is. I could care less. But I know who was next in line if this man didn't get it. I know by the stand they take who they was going to put in the Supreme Court judge. Our churches would be gone right now. And it's just a matter of time. When they're going out and they get somebody else in, our churches are gone. It's just coming to the place. And they already come in in Florida. They wanted pastors to turn over their notes to the government. Well, they couldn't read mine in the first place. They could have all they want. But what they was going to do, they was going to see if you preach on this sin or, or this thing or this activity, it's called a hate crime and you will go to jail. Help the goodness, somebody's going to make bail. Because it's coming a time and place where most of the people in here are not going to come to church if they're going to be harassed by our government. It's getting close. It's getting close. We've lived the easy street for long enough. There's people in foreign countries, third world countries, that they profess to be Christian, they're killed immediately, beheaded. How many of y'all would take a stand? Remember, what was it, Cal Caliban School, when the guy went in there and asked who was saved, and that little girl raised her hand, he shot her right there on the spot. She didn't deny Christ. She didn't deny Christ. Need to pray, intercede for our country. Let me ask you this. 
Do you even see a need to start interceding for anybody? If not, raise your hand. We need to start interceding for you because you're in pretty bad shape. Amen? This is what the Bible says in Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 30. This is what the Bible says. And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge, stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it. The sad part of this verse of Scripture says, but I found none. What we need is some good godly mamas and papas. Some goodly moms and dads. Some godly teenagers who still love this country, love the God, love the Lord, love their people around them and start interceding for lost people. I believe beyond a shadow of doubt when God's people start praying, it moves, turns the hand, it moves the hand of God and we can start seeing things happen. Not necessarily in Mavscott, in Beckley, in Raleigh County, in the state of West Virginia. It can start right here right now God's looking for somebody anybody who be willing to stand in the gap to make up the hedge that's all he wants maybe here tonight from the back seat to the front seat don't make no difference you want to stand in the gap right now's the time as Bob and them get a song ready Somebody on your heart that you want to intercede. You want to be the great go-between. You want to stand in the gap between them for them right now. You need to do that.